Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest YouTube live broadcast in the world. Um, so uh, welcome, everybody. You might be wondering what Getting Sketchy is. If you're here, you probably aren't wondering. You probably know, but I'll go ahead and tell you. It's where either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher, Ashley Hurst, or Ashley Hurst tries to create a drawing for you within 45 minutes. And of course, we sprinkle in a little bit of fun instruction in that as well. This is supposed to be fun, so just keep that in mind. And we're also a couple of sketchy dudes anyway, so that's the title, uh, Getting Sketchy. We are creating a sketch too, that's important. And like I mentioned, my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher Ashley Hurst is joining us and he's right over there. How you doing, Ashley? I'm doing great tonight, Matt. Thanks for asking. I hope you all are doing well also. We missed you guys last week. You know, we didn't broadcast because of the holiday. I hope you had a wonderful holiday. Um, I'm thankful. I was thankful for Thanksgiving, but I'm thankful to be back and to see what Matt's going to draw tonight. Yes, absolutely. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Um, of course, it's Thanksgiving here in the United States. Um, and that's a good time for us to just take a break and reflect on what we're thankful for. And that's really something that we should do every day anyway. So if you make it a point to just take a second and uh, you know maybe even out loud, say what you're thankful for, it will do wonders to your mood. It'll make you such a happier person. So mm -hmm. I think it's really important that everybody give thanks every single day for at least one thing. And we all have something to be thankful for, right? Now, if you're wondering uh, if we were coordinating what we were wearing tonight no we weren't um not exactly we're we're in the same color <laughs> we're in the same color family tonight we're analogous um actually if you take the background into consideration then we're actually mm -hmm. complimentary that's true because, we're complimentary uh, to our background orange so. and uh, blue in the background and mm -hmm. then you've got a little bit of blue back there in your background it's a little bit you know I'm, i've kind of I, I think i've got more red violet going you're, on yeah you're more but there's some yeah. there's some there's some orange peeping in there right there's so. a little bit of there yeah uh, either way it wasn't planned okay um so uh, before you make a comment about that we we beat you to it and speaking of comments there is a uh, chat box if you're all watching this live and of course, I've seen people from all over the world chiming in North Wales, United Kingdom, South Texas, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm sure Ash will be on that mm -hmm. in just a minute. But welcome to everybody from wherever you are in the world, whether you're watching this live or, or if you're watching this sometime in the future, because of course, these are recorded and then immediately uh, published on YouTube. Uh, you can make comments during tonight's broadcast and you can ask questions. If you do have a comment or question that's directed at myself or Ashley, if you put that comment or question in all capital letters, that'll help us see it amongst all the other comments and questions. Um, Ashley's going to be man in the chat box uh, tonight, so I will help him see it a little bit easier, of course. Um, is there anything I'm forgetting here? I, um, I just remembered what I'm forgetting. Uh, let's see. Ellie reminds us it's Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Oh, I think happy that, Hanukkah. That just began. That's right. All right. Very good. Um, I think that's it. No. Did you? Oh, oh, wait. There's no. there's one thing we forgot. There's there's a couple of things. First of all, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we publish new videos and also when you, you'll be notified when we go live here with Getting Sketchy. And if you like this video, of course, click the like button. I know that seems like a very small gesture to do, but it does really help this video get discovered by other people, uh, which which is a good way uh, to tell us that you appreciate what we're doing here. So if you click that like button, that's definitely helpful. And we also have a membership program at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject and subjects and mediums, weekly live lessons. So after we're done here on YouTube, we're gonna go over to thevirtualinstructor.com. We're actually not going anywhere, but we're gonna be broadcasting at thevirtualinstructor.com where I'm continuing to work on a pastel landscape. Uh, the live lessons are done in series. Anyway, those are broadcast each week as part of our membership program. There's weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. If you want to check out our program, there is a link in the description below this video. You can go check it out a little bit later. And uh, if you want to get on our mailing list, uh, there's a link below in the description for that as well. You also get three free course videos and eBooks with that as well if you sign up. Uh, that's all I needed to say. That's what we had forgotten. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's switch over and get into this one. All right. Uh, so I am working with a motif and um, 
a motif is basically um, a theme. And uh, Ashley's also working with a motif. My this motif series. is a little bit loose. Yours is <laughs> yours is really tight. I'm yeah. impressed with your motif yeah. this this uh, series, and I was impressed with my motif last series. But that's, I've been a little loose this time. You know, that's what my dentist said to me one time. He goes, "Hey, you know, Matt, I'm really impressed with your motif." <laughs> um, anyway, uh, a motif, of course, is a um, is a theme, and Ashley's theme is stuff that you walk on. Right. Right. It started this out as series. pathways, and it's yeah. expanded to things you walk on. And my theme is food, uh, which is. Is more concise, but also there's bit. lots of different options. There, I, so. I've thought about my theme, what I'm going yeah. to draw for for the very last, you know, for my last drawing, and I uh -huh. thought about drawing a portrait of Lou Reed. Yeah, we okay. could all take a walk on the wild side. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. All right. Um, yeah, I, I love some Ru Lou Reed. Uh, anyway, um, all right. So I am working on um, pastel matte paper. This is made by a company called Clear Fontaine. This paper is expensive. Don't let that deter you, though. Um, you can work on any type of paper that you want. You can use any medium that you want, but I'm going to be using pastel pencils for this. I do have a couple of pastel sticks that are going to be thrown in the mix closer to the end. And if you can tell by the size of my picture plane, I've definitely made this drawing a lot smaller. That's to ensure that I get it done in the 45-minute time frame. Uh, so I'm going to have to be working fairly tight with these pastels, which mm -hmm. usually do better on larger surfaces. But when you're working with a tight time frame, uh, like I'm going to a smaller picture plane, of course, is going to be helpful. These are Rembrandt soft pastels. These are Conte Opry pastel pencils. And you'll notice that they're going to be sharpened a little bit differently because they're fatter. But I'll also be using uh, my uh, Carbothello pastel pencils as well. Uh, so you can see that these will fit a standard pencil sharpener. So why not use a standard pencil sharpener? Uh, to sharpen those pencils. Uh, so a variety of different forms of pastel here, but they're all pastel. These, these pencils are pretty soft, these pencils are pretty hard, and these pastels obviously are very soft. They're soft pastels. So uh, we're gonna be drawing this pair over here, and uh, this photo reference is originally from Pixabay. Well, not originally from Pixabay, it is from Pixabay, but I have edited it. Uh, so hard to say that. Uh, I have edited it. Um, the pear was originally yellow, and I made it a lot more green and added a little bit of blush to it, if you will. Um, I think the green and the red are going to bounce against each other really nicely, and that mm -hmm. blue background is really nice. I didn't do anything to the blue background. Um, that was really what appealed to, to yeah, me I love that initially. Background. And there are different directions you could go with this if you wanted to. I always encourage people, when you're working with a color image, to try to pull out a specific color scheme and color schemes are, are basically um, a, a collection of colors based on relationships of where they're located on the color wheel. So uh, one color scheme you could go with is a complementary color scheme. Green and red are opposite from each other on the color wheel. That would be a complementary color scheme. Another obvious direction you could go is you could work with primary colors, which would be a color triad. So you could bring out more yellows in the pair, more of the reds, obviously, uh, in that blushy area, and then, of course, the blue background. That also makes things pop. Or you can draw the subject the way it is because the pear is really more yellow green and uh, the red is not really that dominant. Uh, but, you know, if you're thinking of the pear being yellow green and you can bring out a little bit more of that red, maybe that blue. Uh, so you're kind of skirting a little bit with a, a, a um, color triad, just, just a little bit. So we mm -hmm. push it a little bit. Um, anyway, so I'm going to be sketching things out very lightly with a, let's see, which pastel pencil am I going to use for that? I guess I'll use the cream pastel pencil for that. And then from there, I'll start blocking in colors just like what I would with a regular painting. Um, all right. So I think... Are we ready for the timer? We're ready to go. Are there any questions I can answer before I? I don't believe so, or at least not okay. in capital letters. And if you do have a question, just once again for Matt or myself, put it on all caps to be sure that I see it to read out. Okay, so I will have 45 minutes to try to complete this drawing, and that is a suggestion. <laughs> um, so, in other words, if I go over 45 minutes, my head should not explode. It hasn't <laughs> yet. Uh, and we've been over 45 minutes quite a few times. Lots of times. But I think you're going to do this one. I think, you've, I hope I think so. you've got this. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find where the top of the pier is uh, on my picture plane here. Um, and it's a little bit, you know, if we take 
the entire picture plane, which is almost the exact same size of this pencil, hmm. it's kind of in the upper 75%. And it's not directly in the center either. So the center of my picture plane is right about here. So it's off just a little bit to the right. Now, uh, this paper has been partitioned off with um, masking tape, obviously, to create the picture plane. And the picture plane is proportional to the reference. Now, what that means is that it's not the same size as the reference, but it is proportional. So if it was the same, if it was the same size, it would be exactly the same uh, relationship between the, the length and width. The ratio Prob of the height and width are the same for both pieces. Right. Probably everybody knows what proportional means, but... It All right, so we do have a question from it. Celtic Peasant. What are the pastel pencils that you recommend? Oh, there are lots of good brands out there. Um, I personally like the ones that I'm using, which are the Conte Opéry pastel pencils. These are the big, thick ones. These are expensive. I like and those as well. They are very difficult to sharpen because the wood is very hard, but the pastel material is very soft. So what ends up happening is you end up breaking them, and I wish I could grab one that's broken, but I don't have one that's broken right now. But that has That's kind of why you've sharpened it the way that you did. There was a comment earlier about the length of the filament or lead that was sticking out. Yeah. And you kind of have to sharpen down to that and be careful not to go into it and then sharpen the filament itself. Oh, right? yeah, and sometimes you sharpen, you, you try to sharpen it the way I sharpen it, and it still breaks. Still breaks. Uh, so... It's frustrating, but uh, those are great. And then the Carbothello pastel pencils, which I'm using a Carbothello pastel pencil right now, is are, are really great too. They're harder uh, than the Conte Opry, but they're still really great. All right, so I'm just trying to look at the basic shape of my pair here. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull up a stem here. And I'm looking at the edges of the picture plane and kind of comparing them to my reference here. to get this in a similar location. And now this cream pastel pencil that I'm using is gonna be covered up. So, you know, this is, this is some pretty serious outlines here with, yeah. <laughs> with the cream <laughs> pencil, but that, no worries. It shows up really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, when you're working on a tone surface like this, you probably wanna use a pencil that's gonna stand out. Now we do have another question. All right. That is, um, it's a good one. I think it'll benefit a lot of people to hear an answer. Is there a way to prevent pastel drawings from smudging that doesn't involve using a fixative? And Matt doesn't use a fixative, sometimes I do. Yeah, I don't use a fixative and I store my work um, in a series of drawers and I, I have on my schedule of videos that I wanna come out. This, by the way, is a light green. Uh, if we, I'll come back to the smearing of the pastel okay. in just a minute. Uh, but if we look at the pair, we can kind of pick out an area that is lighter green, kind of a lighter value, kind of fades into this area right here with the red. And then it comes down here. Of course, there's some variation in the value, but I need to get at least a base color down. So I'm going to start with this light, this light yellow green and just fill in this entire shape here. Now, um, one thing you can do to help alleviate some of the, oh, this is is the question in reference to what do you do when you're finished with the pastel drawing or while you're working on the drawing? I don't, it's not, it doesn't really specify, so I guess we could talk about both a little bit. Okay, we'll talk about both. Uh, one thing you can do is make sure that you're using paper that will help uh, knock down some of the dust. Help and hold on to that dust, right? That will hold on to that dust. And you can see here with this pastel matte paper, there's not a lot of dust. Um, and that's not just because we're using pastel pencils. That has something to do with it. But uh, it's really more the tooth of the paper, which is kind of like a fine grit sandpaper. And it holds the pastel material in place. There's still a little bit of dust here. And I'm going to have to blow it away in a minute. I know that's, that's terrible. Um, but... The paper will definitely help minimize the amount of dust that you have. Uh, so you want to look to use papers that are heavily textured. Of course, uh, that helps with the layering process as well, but it will also help keep down the dust. So that's sort of step one, I guess, of pre sure. preventing too much smearage and dust. 
Now, um, when you're storing your artworks, I like to keep mine in a set of drawers. And uh, as I kind of mentioned, I'm going to be doing a video on storing artwork soon. I've got it in my schedule. Do you and put a piece of, of paper between your pastel drawings? Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. When I make the video, I will make it a point to put a cover on all of the drawings. <laughs> um, but that keeps them from, they really don't smear, they really don't get messed up. Um, and that might sound crazy, but it's true. All right, now I'm going to go to a, a muted green here. So I, I feel like just storing your artwork properly is helpful. And then framing it. I mean, the best way to protect mm -hmm. a pastel is to, is to frame it with uh, under glass and make sure the glass doesn't touch the pastel paper. And this is, you know, if you're going to not put fixative on it, then a good way to keep it from smearing is make sure no one can ever touch it. And keeping it under glass with like a little bit of a, a space between the paper and the glass is really important. Okay, so now this green that I'm adding here, it's it's a little bit cooler than the original green, but it's just maybe a step darker. Not a whole lot, but that probably can help you see it a little bit more. Um, and then let's go a little darker still. Now, um, to be clear for everyone out there, this is um, dry pastel. Some people call it chalk pastel, but it is not oil pastel. You could you could yeah. follow along with oil pastels just fine. Oh yeah, but definitely. Matt is not using oil pastel. No, this is uh, this is soft pastel in a pastel pencil. And now I'm bringing in a darker green. So right now I'm kind of just trying to get the form and overall shape of the pair in place, and then I'll start pushing values darker. This okay. green is not exactly the same green that's in the reference, but that's okay. It's a darker value. And then we'll come in and punch some of that red in in just a minute. Now, um, this outline, I just want to say this real quick. Sure. That outline that's around the edges, that's going to be cleaned up at the end of the process uh, when we address the background. We'll address that, but the background last. And this will allow us to be free with our edges, um, and we can define them in the last step. All right, go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, I was just going to go go back to the smearing of the pastel just a little bit because Buddy had mentioned in the chat that there is some clear paper that you can use to rest your hand on while you work. And you've been using that, Matt. Yeah, there you go. It's right, a, here's piece, a, little bit it's of a piece of vellum or mylar, and yeah. you can see you're drawing through it a little bit and lay it across your artwork and slide your hand on it without it sliding so much. It doesn't um, grab as much material as putting down like a paper towel or something, something that maybe is a little more porous. So you could try that while you're in process. And then if you've got small details to put into an artwork that could smear easily, whether it's paint or pastel at the very end, um, sometimes I create a bridge that out of rulers that are just resting on top of, uh, you know, erasers or something short like that, that I can rest my hand on and have it float over top of the artwork while I put in some small details when I need to have a lot of control, but definitely don't want to touch the artwork at that point. So just a couple of tips there for working with pastel in process. Okay, let's see how this green looks. This might be, eh, it's not too bad. We'll, we'll use it. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit darker, and I, I'm going to incorporate some other colors in just a minute. Uh, besides the greens, these are your. This is your base color. These are kind of like base base colors, and then we're going to mm -hmm. use these colors to manipulate the values or manipulate the color after we add some of the darker values and lighter values into in just a minute. That'll make sense. What I just said will make sense in just a minute. So just hang in there. All right, now we had a question earlier um, from Ernest that we didn't get to, and he was just asking about the Generals brand of, of pastel pencils. And I've got, I, you know, I love Generals. I think it's a great company. So um, I, just because I typically use or prefer the Conte Opry, I wouldn't take anything away from the Generals. So. Yeah, I don't have any experience with the Generals pastel pencils, but I do love their charcoal pencils and definitely the layout pencil, mm -hmm. which I think is... The uh, the white charcoal and the layout pencils are the uh, two pencils that I use. By generals. By generals, yeah. yeah. All right, Marie asks, would the paper, uh, the Canson Mitant paper, be good as well for this? Yeah, if you don't have, if you don't have any pastel matte paper, then definitely the Canson Mitant pa pastel paper uh, will be great for this. Let's bring some yellow green in here. Let's see if. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. I, 
I should have brought a little bit of yellow over here. That's not, that's not too terribly different from the first color that we used. Let's see if we can bring a little bit more yellow into this pier here before we start going a little bit darker. All right, Fabio Rage asks, did you make your reference image or is it from some image bank? Uh, no, it is from Pixabay. It's kind of both. Your, the answer is yeah, really both. It's kind of, it's from, it is kind of both. It is from Pixabay, but I do like to edit my references, sometimes very heavily. This one is not heavily uh, altered, but it is altered. Uh, in other words, well, not in other words, what I did is I added the red. There was no red in there. Um, and I also made the pear more green. It was actually um, more of a yellow pear and added quite a bit more green <laughs> to it. Um, and of course that red area. Uh, so just did all that in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And we have a course for that, of course. A course um, for manipulating, manipulating your, your, your photos references. for called, traditional art. Right, it's called Basic Photoshop for Artists. Mm -hmm. And it's made for people like you and me that uh, use reference material and uh, need to alter it in some way. Okay, so this is a very dark, cool uh, gray, and we're gonna use this to push some of the values a little bit darker. And uh, once I kind of get a good idea of the modeling of the form, then we can start playing around with some of the colors a little bit more. And of course, we'll add those details later, but I can definitely slow down a bit here, glancing up at the time. Oh, yeah. Now, this is a green a progress. pair, obviously, and I could, I could really use a, a, a warmer shadow or a cooler shadow, and it's really, really going to be up to you which direction you go. The green's going to look a little bit different if you use a warmer shadow, and in the reference, the shadow is kind of a little bit warmer, but since I'm pushing my pair a little bit more green, uh, not just in the manipulation of the photo, but also in the drawing, uh, then it kind of makes sense to have a little bit more of a cooler shadow in my drawing here. So that's why this cooler gray is used here. There is a little bit of reflected light that's coming back on the left side of the pair, just beyond the core shadow. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space for that. That's going to have a, just a hint of blue in it we're going to do that blue background. Mm -hmm. That'll be nice. Getting a little bit of the background color into the pair will make it feel like it really truly occupies that space. Now I'm being very light with this uh, pastel pencil application here. Now you can go heavy if you want and then cover back over it with a darker green, which we might end up doing. Uh, but for right now, it's very light. And one thing you'll, you may have noticed that I'm not doing Anybody notice something that's conspicuous, an activity that's conspicuously absent from what you might normally see with a pastel drawing? Let's see if anybody can figure out. Oh, I'm right. I'm to. watching the chat. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? I think I may have an idea. Okay. I'm not sure. Something that's conspicuously absent that you would normally do with a pastel drawing or any type of chalky drawing like this. You might do. While we wait for an answer, uh, Suzanne says, what's the difference between soft pastels and oils, and when would you use them? Thanks. Uh, well, you can use an, you can use oil pastels or pastel, pastel, uh, traditional soft pastels whenever you want. It's, that's completely up to you. Um, There's not they're just a right different time mediums. and a wrong time. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just different mediums. So one of the big differences is that the oil, um, the oil pastels use a vegetable oil, as their binder that never dries. Mm -hmm. And the pastel, soft pastels use gum arabic, which does does dry and actually starts dry. So you're kind of talking about a wet versus a dry media or media comparison. And in a lot of ways, I mean, they're both like painting, um, but uh, oil pastels is probably even a little bit more like painting because you can work more wet into wet, which is a, you know, a typical acrylic or oil painting technique. And boy, I wish I could have been at right, the... We've got uh, a lot of answers coming in, <laughs> and they're all almost the same. No blending or no smudging. Uh, that's exactly right. Yeah, very good. great job uh, out very there. Very good. Great Roll job. There. And, uh, and, and Priya says no blowing. You haven't actually been blowing the dust that much either, and I noticed that too. That paper's doing a great job. Well, 
Uh, yeah, I have been blowing a little bit. I had to reach around and get a couple of other colors. I, I isolated colors that I was going to use, and then I didn't isolate any of the reds that I needed to use. So uh, let me sharpen sharpen these here real quick. Um, yeah, this paper does a good job of holding the material in place, but I have I have blown a little bit, but maybe you just haven't seen it. Okay, do you're doing a great job keeping the blowing of the dust. I'm doing a good job being sneaky. On the, on the sneak, right. All right, this is kind of a warmer red. I'm not sure if it's going to work or not, but we'll put a little bit down and see what happens. So a little bit of cross hatching here, just ever so slight cross hatching here. With a very light touch. Mm -hmm. uh, a moment ago, um, Raul from Argentina mentioned that he likes to use 1500 grit sandpaper. And that's come up a few times in the live lesson that happens um, right after this program over at the virtualinstructor.com where Matt is also working on with pastel on a landscape. Uh, we've been talking about different options and sandpaper, automotive sandpaper grits as well. So that's a great alternative. Um, if you don't have, like, pastel matte paper, then uh, you could use some really, really fine grit sandpaper. All right, Cynthia asks, is there an odor with oil pastels like with oil paints? No, there's not. There's really not. Not it, at all. It does. I mean, it is... It's a little messy, you know, it gets in your fingerprints if you're like me. I'm a big believer in not using my fingers to blend or smear with, except when I'm working with oil pastels, I'll use them sometimes. And so they do get down into your fingerprints. They're pretty messy in that way, but they don't have any smell. Well, we're different on that one because I, will, I do not blend with my finger with oil pastels, but I will blend um, with my finger with soft pastels or charcoal. With charcoal. With charcoal. Interesting. I never touch my charcoal. Oh, yeah. I'll touch it. I'll touch You'll it. You'll touch it. I'm not scared of that charcoal. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, this is a, kind of a, it's a yellow. It's kind of a pale yellow. I'm bringing a little bit of that over here on the right side. And then we'll start pushing some of those light values and also start to layer over the top of some of the colors that we have in place. So um, we need to continue to layer colors here and as we do they'll soften around the edges you can kind of see that up there at the top but we've got too much contrast right now so we're going to come in with some mid-tones in just a minute okay we've got a couple more comments and i'm going to take them out of order because one was uh, about the sandpaper it's from buddy asking about the sandpaper would you get that from like a hardware store i don't know if most hardware stores would have you know super fine grit 1500 or maybe even 600 and up sandpaper grit, but maybe so. I would just try to order some. Um, you might actually get it from like a some sort of a paint supply store. I'm not certain though. I would just try to order some. I don't think my local hardware store might have some sandpaper that fine of a grit. And then um, let's see. Dale mentions that uh, that sandpaper is probably not archival. Definitely not archival. But then again. Neither were any of the surfaces that Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci worked on. And most of them are still around. So we just got to take really good care of them. I, I know it might seem sacrilegious to say this, but a lot of people get wrapped up in the, the archival stuff. Um, and yeah, it is important. But don't let that stop you from working from experimenting. on a particular yeah, Don't yeah. let it f stop you from experimenting. You know, I'm not a, a huge fan of Jackson Pollock, but he used a lot of materials that weren't archival. He used house paint. And he still made artwork that has brought a lot of, uh, a lot of joy to people's lives. So experiment. Try, try it out. See if you like it. Okay, with this light yellow green, I'm doing some blending um, as I'm applying it. But I'm also adding some middle values. And I feel like it needs to, we need to have some stronger middle values. So we'll go back in here with this green. So we're deviating quite a bit from what is in the reference, but I feel like we need to have um, some real distinction between the values mm -hmm. so that the pair feels three dimensional, uh, which it's starting to feel three dimensional right now, but. It's got a lot of, a lot of light, dark contrast already. Right, it needs to, to feel that, if we just replicated the photo reference, um, then we probably are not pushing the form as far as we could because oh. there's not a lot of 
value change in some of the middle parts of this yeah. uh, pair. And we can push that a little bit further. Another, when I say push that, I mean exaggerate it. Okay. Um, Let's see. Now, there are a few, couple of more questions here. Um, Sketch Shinover asks, do you like to work light to dark or dark to light with pastel pencils? I don't really think about think about it that way. I just kind of, with pastel pencils, since they can layer over the top of what you already have in place, I kind of just start laying down colors and start allowing the mixing to happen. And the pastels uh, kind of give you the freedom to work in either direction. Yes. Because they yeah. do cover themselves. Yeah, it's more like an opaque painting medium. Okay. Um, well, I know there are certain rules around opaque painting mediums like oils and acrylics that people like to follow, but um, I think that there's a lot of people out there, and if you've been around the channel a while, you know this already, there's a lot of people that overthink what they're doing, and um, sometimes you just need to go after it. <laughs> sometimes you need to just do it. Just go for it. Um, because the last thing you want to happen is be working on a piece and say, well, I'm working from light to dark here. And then you accidentally uh, get too dark or too light and feel like you can't go back and fix it because you're going to be breaking what you some had set out rule. to do. Yeah, yeah, some kind of rule that you've placed among yourself, upon yourself. All right. Um, Jossip asks, would a set of 12 creative colors be enough for a first timer uh, with pastels. Yeah, I think so. In fact, sometimes starting out with a limited set of colors helps you make color decisions and encourages more mixing, which, you know, through color mixing, we learn color theory through that experience. So I, I would actually support maybe working for a while with just 12 colors before you start expanding your palette. Yeah, it's, but don't let that frustrate you too. So, um, it's definitely an advantage when when you're working with pastels or, or pastel pencils or colored pencils. It's definitely an advantage to have more colors at your disposal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, let's bring in a little bit of an earthier orange. What's here. advantageous is you get all those um, colors that aren't quite as uh, bright, you know, aren't as full chroma or full strength. And so you don't have to mix them down so far. And that, so you're not layering quite as much and filling up the tooth of the page as quickly. So that's the, that's the danger. And Right. And that's kind of what we're... The more colors that we layer here, the more we're knocking back the chroma. Mm -hmm. And that leads to a, a more realistic image because I find this color in reality, right? <laughs> <laughs> on 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 a a natural occurring object. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Um, all right, let's bring a little bit more of that red back in here. I don't want this to be overpowered by the red, but I do want it to have a little bit more pop, a little bit more of a pop than what we got. And it will make the shadows a little darker and highlights a little bit lighter. All right, we've got a question from Eamon from Malaysia. I just want to know which paper has the same texture as the pastel matte paper. Pastel matte paper. Yeah, it's it's pretty unique, and the, the closest thing you're going to get to is working with those super fine grit sandpapers that we've talked about a little bit earlier. And that's a question I, I get a lot um, about what paper can I replace this with yeah. or, or whatever. And paper manufacturers make, there's a bunch of different papers out there for a reason, and that's because... A lot of the papers are, are different and unique. And if you want the effect of that particular paper, sometimes you have to just bite the bullet and buy that particular paper. Mm -hmm. right, I'm gonna mute the, mute the red here a little, little too strong. That yellow from the pear is showing through. Alana says that she likes to work on heavy watercolor paper. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's make uh, this shadow just a little bit darker. Can we go a little bit darker? And I am bringing in the black, so watch out. So this is going to have to be a very light touch here. Okay, um, Teresa, is, who's working with oil pastels, says, with oil, do I blend with linseed oil? Um... I think some you there's, can there's quite a there's a few different materials you can use to any, mix and blend your oil pastels. Yeah, any solvent that you can use with uh, any solvent that would be used with traditional oils, you can use with oil pastels. So, like, think along the lines of 
um, paint thinners. And you might could mix a little bit of oil in with your paint thinner. I haven't tried that, kind of like a traditional paint medium, just to, um, you know, just to cut it a little bit. Might try that. But uh, paint, paint thinners like low odor mineral spirits, turpentine. And, you, you know, and you can, you can blend them pretty well um, without any additional solvent. Just a little bit of elbow grease. And there are also colorless blenders that you can for you can oil use pastels. With oil pastels, oh, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to have to get one. That's what I think I'd like to use because the consistency consistency would be the same. Yeah, it's just like with colored pencils, where the material is. Um, it's just the it's just the the pigment is missing. The pigment's but, missing. But yeah, the, just uh, the binder. Everything is still else there. is there. Yeah, everything else. All right, um, let's see here. Let's add. Let's go ahead. Let's work on the stem next. Uh, I'm still not convinced. I'm finished. I'm definitely not finished with a pair, but um, I think I'm going to go to the stem next, and we'll get some information there, and then we'll come back, put the spots and the highlights on the pair. Um, let's see how much time we got. Plenty of time. I, everything I'm going to do in the future for getting sketchy is going to be pastel pencils. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that That's a joke. I'm kidding. Oh, Alana was asking for recommendations on heavy watercolor paper. Oh, um, okay. Ar arches? Yes, definitely arches. And um, you can get, there's, you know, there's cold press watercolor paper, there's hot press watercolor paper, and then there's... Uh, watercolor rough. paper it's called also rough, rough. Right. Yeah. And, and it's super rough and rough paper is is uh, not pressed like the hot press and cold press paper and that's why it's rough and if uh, you you want to stick with cold press paper or the rough paper the rough paper is probably going to be better it's also more expensive you like the rough I, I like the cold press I'm talking about for pastels oh okay for pastel yeah, 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 my, yeah. my bad for painting I would prefer the uh, cold press paper Mm -hmm. If you're using pen and ink with your uh, watercolor, then hot press paper is going to be. And if you like it heavy, you know, buy a sheet of 300 pound. Let's see. What am I you, it's really, I mean, it's almost, you really can't, you really can't fold it without it, without it breaking. It's pretty stiff. I know I just said I was going to go work on the stem. But I wanted to bring a little bit more yellow in there. A little bit more yellow. <laughs> a little more yellow. Let's go to the stem now. Um, we're going to start with this dark brown. And I'm just going to fill in the entire shape here with the dark brown. I, and I am switching back and forth between the um, Conte Opry and the Carbothello pencils. Again, if, mm -hmm. if you're not sure which brand I'm using, just look at the the tip, and you see this, how this is a mess, uh, that's Conte Opry. It's nice and clean on the end. Then that is the Carbothello pencils. Okay, we've got a couple of questions, uh, several questions that just popped up. So Teresa, who's working with the oil pastel, says, um, then would I use a cotton swab? Um, new, I'm so new to this. Yeah, you can use it, if you're using some solvent, like some type of a paint thinner, you could use a cotton swab and, and uh, you know, use, a light touch and um, think in terms of less is more with the paint thinner, at least at first. Now, and, and, you, and see how it does. And you can sat, you know, saturate your cotton swab or a chamois um, more as you go. We're getting a lot of questions about oil pastels tonight. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that I just released the oil pastel course. That's right. No kidding. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> just a, two, week, two weeks ago. Um and that course will be very beneficial to you if you're wanting to get started with oil pastels. We do several different subjects and cover a lot of material on using oil pastels. And um, oil pastels are a little bit more straightforward than most people think they are. Yeah, I love it. We, we both love oil pastels. Dark gray here, not dark enough. Got to go to the black. In fact, when Matt and I talk together daily, 
at Halloween, we would draw bruises on one another with oil pastels. No, that was soft pastels. Were they? Yeah. I thought we used oil pastels. Yeah, soft pastels. Oh, um, I, I'm sorry. And <laughs> if you're telling people that we're drawing bruises on each other, they they don't know the context of that. That sounds terrible. It, it's like you know, Halloween, it, <laughs> like a like a zombie. We look like like zombies. <laughs> yeah, a little a little bit of purple soft pastel. It looks like a horrible bruise. a little bruise. bit of yellow right. right on the inside. That's the key right there. Oh, you don't want to is... use the black. You want to get some color in there. No, no, no. Pur for a, for purple and yellow, and you've got the perfect <laughs> facial bruise. And uh, you don't need to dress up for Halloween. You just need to put a little pastel on your face. Just wear your, wear your materials. All right. Let's see. Um, I think we've got some more questions. <laughs> Just wear your pastels. Margaret had just mentioned that a few minutes ago it looked like you were using a very, very light touch, and that's right. There was a question before I, that yes, one by I, Suzanne. Do you add gentle layers or use more pressure for deeper colors? <laughs> and that depends. Usually when I, I like to refer to what I just did in some of these areas, like I went over the red and then I went over it, uh, I went over the red with like a light yellow green. I kind of like to refer to that in my own mind as a, a glaze. I know that sounds weird with soft pastels, but uh, so when I'm applying a glaze, it's a very soft, light touch. Um, but when I'm putting down a color in, a, in an area that needs to be solid, it's a moderate touch. It's not super heavy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fill in all the tooth, which is the texture of the paper, but I do want to have enough of the material on the surface uh, so that it's a solid application. And then if I want a color to be bold and stand out and fill up all the tooth, then I put heavy pressure on it. Um, all right, so up here in the stem, we have a pretty strong highlight coming from the upper, or strong light source coming from the upper right-hand corner that's producing strong highlight on the stem. So I'm going to start here with a little bit of cream. And these colors, uh, the Carbothello pencils and the um, Conte Opery, do not have names on them. So I'm just referring to the colors in the best descriptive way I possibly can. And that's good. You shouldn't get obsessed with the names of colors or, or trying to match things exactly uh, for what I'm doing. It's always good practice to try to match your own colors, try to figure things out yourself, because that's, you, that's how you learn, and that's how you come up with a uh, basically your own process. Mm -hmm. Stem's looking good. I mean, you need to know how to create a piece of artwork, but then <laughs> beyond that, you do have to do some experimentation and not rely on what other people choose to uh, use. Okay, this is a dark warm gray. I'm just going to define the edge of the bottom of the stem where it goes into the base of the pear or the top of the pear. And let's see, where's that light? Yeah, right, we've got a I'm question. A um, I've spotted a question that was not in capital letters from New Force. Uh, may I ask, Matt, why as an advanced artist, and uh, I've already read the question and I have some comments to make about it too, but um, Matt, why you as an advanced artist haven't put much emphasis on traditional oil painting besides water mixable oils? I haven't mm -hmm. seen much in oils being yeah. the medium of masters. Well, I, I, don't, I don't really like that comment, the medium of masters. Yeah. Um, well, I would say that it's um, <laughs> if Leonardo da Vinci and I'm an oil painter and I use yeah. traditional oil paint. I don't use water mixable oil in my classroom. We use traditional oil paint. Don't let me forget because I do want to address yeah, that. Yeah, because there is a reason why yeah, there's I a, don't sure. use traditional oils. And it's, you know, a lot of people have good reasons for that. Um, I actually, I actually have, I have, I like the smell. I like all the bad stuff about the traditional oil pastels <laughs> personally. But I would say. That if Leonardo da Vinci were here today, he would not use oil paint. He would be a digital artist. He was using whatever was the cutting edge technology of his day, and that was oil paint. It was pretty new at the time. Um, also, uh, color pencils, you know, they didn't exist in the Renaissance, and watercolor wasn't a serious medium. The printing press was just being invented. So there's a lot of great media that have been um, developed since the old masters. And, and are continuing to be developed. So I, I am an oil painter up one side and down the other. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying um, otherwise. I, I think it's the greatest medium that's ever been created. But that's not to say that we should all be, all be using it or that it's the right medium, you know, for every artist or, or every artist's um, even sort of circumstance, I guess I would say. Matt? 
Yeah, well, the reason why I don't use traditional oils anymore is just because of the fumes and the, the smells. That's um, a good reason. Yeah. That's a and, good reason for a lot of people. Yeah, and the water mixable oil paint works in every way the same, except that you can clean it up with water, which is a, a major advantage. I do like the smell of traditional oil paints. I think it smells like an art studio. Um I've noticed one difference between the water mixable oils and the regular oil paints, and it is a slight elasticity to the paint while it's wet. It doesn't have any, it doesn't have any bearing on using the paint. It, there is a very, very subtle um, difference in the, I guess, the, I don't know if this is the right word. It's the stretchiness of the paint. It actually feels just a tiny bit stretchy um, when it's wet. But other than that... Um, they behave the same, and you can mix them together. You can actually mix them together. Now, if you do, they're not water mixable anymore. You've you've taken the water mixable oils and turned them back into to regular oil paint by mixing them with the molecules from um, regular oil paint from the linseed oil. Now, that's what's altered to make them water mixable. It's just the linseed oils manipulated a little bit on the molecular molecular level to accept water, but otherwise, it's still linseed oil. And the pigment's the same. Uh, well, I did want to say that I do think oil oil paints, oil painting um, is one of the most forgiving mediums to work with. Oh, yeah. So I do think it is a, a good medium to use, and I enjoy oil painting. Um, I don't do it as much as I do other mediums because, frankly, uh, there's not a lot of people out there that want to learn oil painting. That's interesting these that days. you mentioned that. I actually led a live lesson about three, I guess about three weeks ago. I mean, three um, lessons ago, mm -hmm. and it was a traditional oil painting. Yeah, we weren't using water mixable oils over at the virtual instructor for that one, but um, and the viewership was good. But less people follow along when we work with oil pastel than when we work with other media, and we want. You know, we want people to, to follow along and to make artwork that they're happy with and proud of. And we can talk about composition and color theory with all these different media. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one medium is not necessarily better than another. You just need to find the medium that works best for you. or And maybe that's multiple mediums, uh, like it is for me. I like lots of different mediums. Uh, but I, I don't think it's... I don't think it's fair to to call to insinuate that one medium is superior to another one um, because it was used during a time period in art history. Hopefully, that makes sense. Um, I don't think that one medium is superior to another, and that's just on on the whole. I don't I don't feel like you have to be a certain type of artist to excel at a certain medium or you're a better artist because you can do a certain medium better um you hopefully what i'm saying is making the sense. media that you're interested <laughs> in you know and if it's oil paint like it is for me it's super that's great go for it yeah but don't don't feel like you have to be good at a certain medium in order to call yourself an, an artist mm -hmm. or that you're going to value what another artist does based on the particular medium that they choose to work in um because I, I think that there's been fantastic artists throughout history that have used a variety of different media. Now, granted, a lot of them have been oil painters, but that's also because oil paint has been the primary medium of choice for many years. And also, artists have uh, also have to think about what their patrons want as well. And for whatever reason, until recent years, and this may still be the case to a certain extent, uh, Oil paintings have commanded more money mm -hmm. um, compared true. to watercolor paintings and pastel because the general public as a whole has kind of perceived oil painting as being superior. Um, but if you want to talk about difficulty, watercolor it's, is the most difficult medium, hands down. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And um, that's the first painting medium that I ever used. And I definitely think that it's the one that that requires the most attention and is the most difficult. So if everybody had that belief, then probably uh, watercolor painting would be revered as the the medium of masters, I guess. I, I don't know. I just, I, if you, if you guys know me, I, I am, uh, 
I am anti this this uh, art attitude that we sometimes see in the art world. Somewhat of a little bit of a snootiness. Um, I'm so anti that, and I know Ashley is too. But um, whenever that kind of comes up, that's that's when I kind of my ears perk up. And I'm Dale like, says I, maybe marble is the superior. Maybe movie. marble is <laughs> next yeah, next week good in call. 45 marble. minutes. I'm going to do a marble sculpture. <laughs> I'm getting sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> and I will enjoy watching that one. Mm. Um, no, but, you know, this is what we're doing here. This is this is fun. This is all about growth. This is about you learning. Um, and um, creating art should be fun. <laughs> so, um, anyway, we probably went off on a little bit of tangent. Yeah, there, I know. And I've missed some questions. I, but I I'm, know sure I have, there, so I'm, I'm sure that there are, I'm sure that there are people that uh, probably agree with what we're seeing here. Uh, there is a little bit of light that's bouncing back up on the bottom side of the pair here. So before we do the background here, I'm going to put a little bit of that reflected light. And yeah. I'm going to bring just a hint of blue in. Okay. We did have a question that disappeared that is being asked again. How long does it take waterable mixable oils to dry? Well, it depends on the pigment, but it's pretty comparable to oil paints. Yeah, I've, I've noticed uh, in my experience, white dries pretty slow to, if it's got titanium in it. Any of the paints that have a, um, a, are made from a metal like titanium white or the cadmium colors, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, they tend to dry slower than earth tones across the board, you know, whether it's with the traditional oils that I use or the water mixable oils that Matt sometimes uses. All right, let's do this background here. Um... Let's see, do I have the colors I want? Let's start. We'll start with this one. And this is where we're gonna define the edges. This is a Rembrandt pastel stick. And this is gonna cover up all of that white or cream pastel pencil that I first put down. All right, let's see. Um, Sketch Shinover asks, I have found Pastel Matte by Claire Fontaine and Carbothello Pastels. Have any substitutes? I think I read that right, I hope. So if I don't believe there's a good substitute for Pastel Matte Paper other than the Pastel Matte Paper or really, really fine grit automotive sandpaper is kind of what we've concluded. What about the uh, Carbothello Pastels? Substitutes for that? Sure, you can use any brand of pastel pencils okay. that you want. Um, I think the in this particular case, the area where you really can't, if you're going to want the exact same results, the area that you're going to need to make sure that you spend a little bit more money on is the the paper. Now, this paper is very expensive. I'm I'm not joking when I say that. Uh, it. For some of you, it yeah, may it be is. shockingly expensive. It is. And it's not anything like Amazon Prime or something that you're going to get the next day. So on top of that, you have to be patient, <laughs> too. And um, I'm down to like five or six sheets in my pad, and it's time for me to order more so that I have some when, uh, when I need it. Uh, but it is, it is a remarkable paper to work on for pastels. Um, and for some folks, it's going to be a game changer. Uh, I know some... Some folks who have, uh, who are members who have started using this paper have just, um, or at least sent artworks in for critique using this paper. And it's just mind blowing how good the artwork is. <laughs> um, because, and a lot of it has to do with the paper and the control you get. I mean, I'm putting yeah. these pastels on heavy. Yeah. There's still some dust produced, but it's not ridiculous. Got a little carried away there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got the bottom of my pair off there with that stroke. I see that uh, Regional Forest asks, what's with all the cap locks? Uh, they just yell at us. Everybody's just yelling at us all the time. No, it's for questions, and thanks for that. Um, let's see. That's so we can see the questions. That's right. It here. helps the questions to stand out from the rest. Um, Priya says, that is one good-looking pair. Good job, Matt. Oh, thanks. Buddy Appreciate asks, it. Matt, if not yep. Carbothello's, which pastel pencils would you recommend in addition? Um, 
You can use any pastel pencil that you wish, <laughs> uh, as long as it's working for you. Uh, so you, you know what we should do is go over the brands to avoid, yeah. and then everything else is good. No, no, that. I don't <laughs> want to tell people to avoid brands either. I this I don't know if this is part of it or not, but there are so many people that uh, are out there, you know, peddling brands, I guess, mm -hmm. um, different brands of material, and some of that is because of the affiliate markets where um, creators can make. Uh, a, a very small, very minuscule amount of commission. I know my time's up. <laughs> it was uh, just a, a question very small, about that. minimal <laughs> amount of, uh, of commission. Yeah. Selling art products, and this is, doesn't apply to everyone, obviously. But there are a lot of videos out there where all they talk about are art products, mm -hmm. and I do talk about the products that I'm using, but just because I'm using them, um, and doesn't mean you have to use the same brand that I'm using. So there, there are tons of, of brands of pastel pencils out there that are great. Uh, they're all just slightly different, of course, but they're not so drastically different that you can't use them and get good results. So, um, you know, find a brand that works for you mm -hmm. and use it. All right, let's put a little cast shadow underneath this and finish this one off here. So um, this is a pastel pencil. All right. Celtic Peasant has a question. What if you can't afford something that, uh, something that expensive? All right. Well, um, there's a few answers to that. The, I guess the best answer is don't worry about it then. Use what you can afford. You know, um, I send my students out sometimes to collect sticks outside and we fashion them into, you know, pens and brushes these are just sticks and then we use ink in a, in a well you know so we can dip our brushes in that we've made out of sticks and we make wonderful ink drawings with sticks that we've picked up from outside sometimes so um, like Matt said the pastel this type of paper can be a game changer for you but if you can't afford it right now don't keep, let that keep you from working with pastels and working just working on other paper so right and then you know tr um, you know, set a goal and uh, and put some money back eventually, and you can afford a pad, and you you can find out if it's worth it to you or not. It'll be a game changer for you sometime in the future after sure. you've had more practice with the pastels. Sure. So don't be discouraged. Right, the more you practice, your no matter what surface you're working on, the better you're going to get. And then once you have some some skill um, and some knowledge and on you how you know to you're making art that are keepers, something you're going to want to keep and display. And that's when you spring for it. Once you have some skill and you have some experience with the pastel and some knowledge uh, on how the pastel is going to behave, and then you go to a surface like this, then it's that's uh, when you'll see that's the when it's a game changer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, I put down some of the traditional pastel, and the pastel pencil is not covering really easily. So I'm going to swing around here and get another pastel. Nice dark blue. Let's see if this is going to cover a little bit better. That's oh, little New bit. Force has thrown down a challenge, Matt. He says, if Matt doesn't do a traditional oil painting soon, I'm not watching anymore. Of course, he's got a smiling emoji, but uh, okay. not water mixables. Come on, let's go. So we might have to do, we may just have to put a clothespin on his nose so he can handle the fumes and, and go for it. We'll see. Or do it outside. We're filming outside of the studio. On location. Well, you know, the thing is, if I did a traditional oil painting, it would look exactly the same as my water mixable oil paintings. <laughs> that's, uh, that's probably true. I've seen Matt's traditional oil paintings from the past. They look great. It, it, it doesn't, you, you, don't get, you don't get extra points for using traditional oils. Just quit yeah. telling people you're mixing it with, with your cleaning up with water. Just don't mention that. Because <laughs> you, you use... Um, you don't actually thin your paint with water. You use a proper water mixable medium for that. Right. Yeah. And so it keeps the consistency the same. And that's part of why, you know, your oil paintings and water mixable oil paintings do look the same. They, they would look this. They're still oil yeah, paint you're using paintings. Using the right, the right, the right um, medium. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not that different. Um, so, <laughs> all right. I'm going to add some black. Hopefully if this pencil will go down over the top. Of what I've got. But he says, Matt, thank you. I was uh, wondering, so enlarge, enlarge the colors of the carbothellos. I don't know if I read that right. I'm sorry. 
Uh, New Force says only teasing because he uses everything except the most important medium. So, and, and I think it's important too. New Force. Um, Celtic Peasant says thank you so much, Matt and Ashley. New Force says in layers he's blocking in everything. Celtic Peasant says thank you so much, Ashley and Marie says very good advice. Just do art with what you can afford. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, I think our pair is is about finished here. Yeah, it's setting up nice now. We can get it's good contact on the surface. Still a little sketchy. Got a good looking okay. shadow down there, though. We made uh, contact. Let's bring a little. Let's clean up the edges around that shadow a little bit. Mm -hmm. The pastel that we used in the background. Then we'll call it finished. Uh, All right. Yeah. Everybody is all about the mediums. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, let's do this little last wonderful thing here. Oh, yes. The, and this is another dessert. thing about the pastel the matte dessert. paper, which is fantastic. Look at this. Look it just how, peels right off. Look at it? how easy it comes off. I don't even have to pull it at a 90-degree angle or any of that stuff. No, it's not going to no tear the paper. No tearing business. It's not going to yeah. come close to tearing the paper because this is... Um, if I paid that much for that paper and it tore pulling the tape off, I would be pretty upset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, it looks a little washed out on the, on the camera that I'm seeing here, but it needs a couple of highlights here with white. Uh, this isn't going to show as much on camera, but it does show in person here. I'm just going to make these highlights a little bit I can, stronger. I see them coming in. I can just see them a little bit, but mm -hmm. for whatever reason on camera, these values over here are pretty washed out. All right. All right, now it's finished. Um, All right, fantastic. The shape right here, a little out of control. No worries. Well, you know, it's an, it's an organic subject matter, so it gives you a little bit of flexibility there. You don't want it to be too similar on the two sides. So yeah, but I, in retrospect, I, I, I think I would have liked a little fatter pair at the bottom. Yeah. But I will. All right, uh, so anything else? Any other questions, or is that it? Let's see. Looks like that was it. Um. Sketch Jennifer has a, a comment or question. I don't paint at all. I sketch and primarily do graphite art, though I have done pastels and colored pencils. In the past 10 years or so, I've never had an art class. I struggle with color theory mostly. Well, you know, just, uh, just keep working with color media and watch how they change when you put them together. Um, make notes in your sketchbook. That's what I do so that I can go back to some of my mixtures when, um, when I need to and, and remember or find the, the pastels or the pigments that I had put together. So you might make some color theory notes along the way. Watch this magic trick. Oh, yeah. Shaving it down. Yeah, well, that's a little better. Covers well, yeah. Looks a little more natural. Doesn't look so much like a growth. <laughs> Celtic Peasant says, thank you so much, Matt and Ashley. All right, guys. It was great fun. So great to be here with you. Well, thank you guys, too. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's switch back out over here. Well, thank you guys for sticking around for the last hour. If you did, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. Um, you know, a little bit more time, we can develop a little bit more depth in the color, add more details, but that's the way it is with everything, right? Um, it's pretty good for a quick sketch in 45 minutes. Hopefully you picked up a couple of things. And if you drew alongside of me, hopefully you're happy with the result. Uh, Ashley, got anything to add for the folks? I don't have anything to add. Thank you for all the questions. Um, you know, it's been two weeks since we've been together, so I really love the engagement. Uh, in the chat box, when the chat box gets rolling, you know, sometimes I get a little antsy, so... Um, if I missed some of your questions, I apologize for that. Put them back in the chat next week, and we'll try to address them then. And we will be back here next week. Next week, Ashley will be doing the drawing. You got any ideas yet? Or? It's going to be uh, Lou Reed. I told you we're taking a walk on the wild side. <laughs> now you'll just have to tune in and see. Uh, Ashley's theme, again, is something that you can walk on. So <laughs> that could be anything, I guess. Hey, you know what? I may, go com I may go completely off motif next week. We'll see. I mean, maybe, there may be a surprise in there. Literally, whatever you do is something that you could technically walk on. <laughs> That's true. Right? That's true. Unless you drew, like, air. We're we're drawing um, Neil Armstrong's footprints on the moon, so <laughs> it's really high contrast. Are those Neil Armstrong's really high contrast. footprints on the is moon? That, are those on the moon? Are those really? Is it really? <laughs> of course it is. I'm not one of those. Anyway, um, we're going to head over to the virtualinstructor.com and 
30, well, less than 30 minutes. Yeah, we hope to see you there. Now. And uh, if you're a member, we'll see you there. If you're not a member, you still got time to, to start a free trial and join us over there. We're working with pastels. Again, I'm working on a different surface. I'm working on Kansas Mitant's pastel paper. I'm taking a completely different approach. To totally it. different. It's a very loose approach, more of an impressionistic approach. It's leaning towards realism, though. It definitely is. So, um, but a different approach than what we did with the pair here, which is a little bit more of a uh, straightforward approach, I guess. More direct, yeah. Um, I hope you guys have a, a wonderful week. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, and those of you that will see at the virtual instructor, we'll see you in a minute. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe to the channel, click the like button, and uh, also check out three free course videos and eBooks in the description below. All right, uh, with that being said, uh, good night, everybody.